Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So a while ago I made a video on a 2.4 GHz Helix dual feed antenna for use with QO100. Now this was designed by Patrick DT8PAT and the plans are freely available on the internet along with the 3D printer file so you can make your own. Now this antenna works extremely well and to be honest I didn't really have any need to upgrade. However, one of the issues I had was the Helix support kept coming off of the aluminium reflector. Plus, I didn't use PETG, 3D print material, which is supposed to be better for UV resistance. So I was always removing it from the dish when not in use. So I reached out to Patrick DC8PAT and inquired about his version two, which looks like it has some major improvements with regard to the Helix support and the reflector. So version two, which is only available to purchase from his website, is made from PETG 3D print material. So no issues with leaving it outside 24 seven. Now the hole where the LMB pushes through is designed for 61 millimeter LMB. However, Patrick does sell LMB adapters on his website, which cover most of the popular LMBs used with QO100. Connection is made via an N-type connector, which is what we would expect when working with microwave frequencies. Now the cone part itself is easily removable just by unscrewing it. This then reveals the Helix antenna itself and the new features of the version two over the version one. Now we can clearly see here the two 3D printed Helix supports, which makes it a much better job of keeping that Helix wire in the correct position. Now these two supports are part of the reflector end print, which means it's just one piece of plastic. So that means no more messing around with super glue or hot glue trying to get that plastic to stick to the aluminium plate. Now the ice cone version two will come pre-tuned and after testing with my network analyzer, the whole of the 30 centimeter band is around 1.5 SWR. Now version one's design had us use a five millimeter aluminium disc for the reflector. But for this version two design, Patrick has opted to use aluminium tape, which is both thinner and lighter than a solid piece of aluminium. Plus it works just as well. Now installing the LMB is fairly easy. Just pop it into place like this and then adjust the tightening screw to clamp down on the LMB and keep it in its position. Please don't over tighten this screw as over tightening could potentially break the plastic clamps, which means you would need a whole new 3D printed reflective plate. So now it's time to attach the ice cone to the dish and perform some tests. I must admit it looks rather cool on the end of the LMB arm. Now for my uploading test, I'm going to be using an SG Labs transverter from 432 megahertz up to 2.4 gigahertz. And then I'm gonna be using an E-Rion 30 watts amplifier. Now I do have a dedicated video on this E-Rion amplifier if you're looking for a nice good quality 30 watt amplifier for 2.4 gigahertz. CQ, CQ, CQ. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec Whiskey. M0 DQW calling CQ, CQ, CQ. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey calling CQ satellite and listening. Mike Zero <coughs> Delta Quebec Whiskey. This is Delta Foxtrot 1 Victor Bravo. Delta Foxtrot 1 Victor Bravo. Over. Yeah, Delta Foxtrot 1, Victor Bravo. Very good afternoon to you. Thank you very much for coming back to the call. The name here is Matt, Mexico Alpha Tango. Uh, DF1VB, M0 DQW. Yes, very nice. M0 DQW, DF1VB returning. Hello, Matt. A pleasure to meet you here on the satellite. I think I have to reduce my power a little bit here. Seems to be a little bit much here. Okay, handle here is Joe, Juliet Oscar Echo, and I'm located in the city of Dortmund. Dortmund, which is within grid locator Juliet Oscar 31 Sierra Kilo, JO 31 SK. And your so signal report here is uh, solid 5 and 9, very clear, nice audio. So it's armchair copy here. M0 DQW, DF1 VB. 
Yeah, DF1VB M0DQW. Well, you're absolutely um, a cracking signal into uh, QO100 this afternoon, Joe. It's, uh, and uh, your audio is sounding extremely nice. Uh, I wonder if you could give me a rundown of, uh, of the equipment you're using. I'll give you a quick, uh, quick overview of what I'm using here. Uh, I'm using an ICOM 705. It's running 10 watts uh, on uh, on 70 centimeters. Uh, I have quite a long length of uh, Mini 8 going out to the end of the garden, so uh, quite a lot of loss. Uh, but then that feeds into an SD SG transverter uh, up to 2.4 gigs, uh, and then that goes into a 30 watt amplifier, an E Reon amplifier. And uh, but uh, I, I don't imagine that it's being driven at 30 watts at all. Uh, I'm probably only doing probably less than half of that. Uh, that's then going into a, a helix, an ice cone helix antenna, uh, which has been sent to me from certainly one of his version two helix ice cone antennas, helix antennas, and uh, I've got that pointing towards the 1.2 meter dish and uh, trying to burn my signal through some trees. <laughs> so there we go, Joe. That's a brief overview of my setup. But uh, I wonder I wonder how you've got your uh, QO100 setup. Now, I had many more contacts that afternoon, but I won't bore you with them all. I think my test using the version 2 ice cone dual feed antenna has proved successful. And if you are in the market for a new feed system for QO100, I'll definitely recommend popping over to Patrick's website and ordering one. Now they are priced just right. And while you're also there, take a look at the other products he sells and his blog. He has some interesting articles relating to ham radio. Now, for those of you that are wondering about signal loss, having the helix in front of the LMB, Patrick also has an article detailing how he worked out that there's only 2 dB of loss on the 10 gigahertz downlink. Anyway, guys, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and until the next one, stay safe, take care. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.